Hello my soccer universe to the last match day 2 review of this World Cup and boy what a day it was. It had a glorious start. However, the last two games had a little bit of a tedious feel to them, especially the Brazil-Switzerland game, but also Portugal-Uruguay was not uh, the, um, you know, the all-out game that we actually shouldn't expect from those two. On the, uh, that was clear that this will be a rather tight game, but an important game. Uh, because the winner of this one was very likely or is now avoiding Brazil, so uh, I'm giving them a bigger run. But yeah, uh, as I said, from glorious to tedious, uh, and I guess that will be the headline for this video. Um, I got a big L for myself because from the first game I missed all uh, three goals and I also missed three goals from the second game. It's all because of life happens. <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, saw quite some of Cameroon Serbia then I had to pick up my daughter uh, from school and kind of decide okay yeah this one let that have no, nothing gonna happen but <laughs> uh, then yeah uh, just going once to uh, fetch a second plate of food and again missing a goal and for the second game yeah i only saw the first 20 25 minutes or something something like it i knew it's two nil and um then i had to teach and in the build-up i saw that south korea equalized and then i saw that ghana got the while my students were working on something saw that ghana won and yep uh was you know, on one side, not very happy. On the other side, you know, uh, it is well, what, what, what it is because ahead of ahead of day, if you would have asked me, okay, you're gonna miss Cameron, Serbia, and South Korea, Ghana, I probably would have signed up for that because you know, uh, it didn't seem like those are the most important games. But that's exactly the beauty of the World Cup, and I am very happy because after all the drudgery that we got, especially in the early games, uh, with the exception of the Argentina Saudi Arabia uh, game. This was exactly what the World Cup is all about. Some great games with many goals scored, not less on optional defending, everything in their drama. Uh, that's what I want to see. And that's uh, what the fun is all about in, 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 in the World Cup. I'm also eating my, a bit my words on Africa because I said this will not be an African World Cup. African teams now scored six goals in a single day. I don't think this has ever happened. African teams in this match, they took got three wins. I also think this uh, this may not have ever happened before. So pretty good round and uh, Cameron uh, salvages a point and most important and only Tunisia um, lost. So really, really positive results from Africa who might get as many as three teams into the next round, although it's probably a still a, a steep, steep hill to climb. But most importantly, we have two more teams qualified. It is title favorites Brazil and also Portugal are already through. I would say a quick recap of the games. I mean, for the first three, you already have uh, my thoughts on the one minute videos, but you can only do so much in one minute videos. Um, Serbia never should have lost that game. Let's be very, very clear. Cameron, I give them a lot for their, um, uh, you know, uh, spirit, fighting spirit, and, and and so on. Also, the kit looked. I mean, the Cameron kit always looks nice. It's just that uh, the horrible jersey, uh, but there at least the kit looked nice. Serbia so really did the best to waste many many chances. Then. Almost out of nowhere, Castelletto uh, heads it in for 1-0 after the Nkulu uh, cross in the 29th minute. And then actually Camera seemed a little bit in control of the, of the game. Uh, until Serbia said, yeah, hold my horses. Um, a Tadic cross came in, Pavlovic uh, scores and then uh, Zivkovic intercepts. Uh, or or, or build-up play from Cameron's in, intercept and Zivkovic plays Dominico Savic, who gets... Just before the break, both of these goals were both scored in stoppage time, makes it 2 1 Serbian. At that point, I really felt, or uh, felt slash thought that, like Canada, yes, yes, the camera is just gonna fold. Because uh, those are two knockout blows. Uh, also, has to be said that Onana was not playing for Cam Camera because he had a bust up with Rigo Betsong, who said, okay, if you don't wanna go home. Very interesting. Uh, 
team building there but you know if 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 it's traveling you get a better a performance out of it uh better better for you but for me the highlight was the a third goal for serbia by mitrovic what an awesome goal and i mean this game epitomizes everything about serbia they can be brilliant and even already the minikovic savage shot was not a little bit but the way that the goal what the ball was uh going around it was intercepted and mitrovic has it plays out to minikovic savage who finds i think tadic who finds then zhivkovic and all these passes are always finding the better positioned man well all of those people actually had the chance to score but it's only when Zivkovic then uh, goes around the Cameroon player. Again, he could score, but he squares it over to uh, Mitrovic, who has an empty net, and makes it 3-1. And at that point, I think everyone would have said Serbia has won this. No. Milenkovic cannot play on offside trap. Avu Baka came on, uh, and that made a, dif uh, a difference. He is sent by Castelletto. Clear on goal, and then he thinks he is he's offside, and just out of nowhere, tries okay, let let's make a nice finish, and lobs it over the like really spoons it over the goalkeeper, really nice finish, and then the goal counts, and that just with the, in a minute or so after kickoff, again it's uh, Abu Bakar sent uh, wide again, Milenkovic not uh, putting him uh, offside, and he can square it to Chupo Moting, and it's three three. And if Cameron has one thing, I don't trust the defense, but up front, they're actually really cool with Toko Kambi, Abu Bakar, Chupo Moting. There's quite some talent there. And it's 3 3. And I was then hoping that one of those teams win it because uh, the draw doesn't help either of them, but alas, it was not to happen. Uh, in the late game, uh, they took on uh, definitely a tedious turn uh, with Brazil against Switzerland. Switzerland keeping it really, really tight. The one thing I think that Switzerland will rule this is that, like Serbia, they try to keep it really tight and keep the uh, keep it a clean sheet more, more or less. And you having Jan Sommer and Brazil really don't, not having the extra edge that Neymar brings. Uh, I mean, everyone says they can win without Neymar. But today you could see that uh, there is just a little bit of spark missing uh, that is not there. Or, you know, the team needs to find itself proper, proper, proper as well. Uh, Vinny Jr. had a good chance where he probably has to do a little bit better. Um, and also Switzerland had one. But uh, there, was, there was one uh, situation where I think it was... Um, uh, uh, Vargas of, of Switzerland running and then he just... Uh, uh, um, Militao just is faster than him there. Uh, it, it was really, there was a lot of mice against men. Switzerland, at the beginning of the first half, had a few ch uh, chances, but then Brazil took over. They had actually a really nicely played goal by Vinicius Jr. Call off for offside because Richarlison is at the play from the own half. It goes towards midfield and Richarlison is running from offside position to midfield and touches the ball. It actually initiates the attacking move. So it's clear there's an offside. This would never have been given if there wasn't VAR. And you can be of two mind, minds of it. I actually think it's good that this is happening this way, but it, it, it is a little bit of uh, mind F, you know what I mean. Um, you have to be aware whether you're onside or offside all the friggin' time. Uh, again, Switzerland holding on, but in the end, another really nicely played move uh, to Rodrigo, and then Casemiro just yanks it into the net takes a really slight turn and then actually, actually Brazil could, could have made it too but um, as I said it was not a great game for most of the time but the last 10 10 minutes made up for uh, some of the drudgery before but it was not an uninteresting game Switzerland is a really good team them hanging with uh, Brazil kind of sort of uh, just about shows actually the quality they have in in, in the inner squad and a uh, huge credit to Switzerland for that one uh, but the results is brazil go through and switzerland with three points also not looking that bad overall going to group h south korea against ghana i mean south korea was the better team on the night or the, on the day uh completely dominating ghana who with their first shot going out of nowhere 
score a one nil through Sally Sud. It was a free 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 get the cool can be clean he he just pulls pull it in and ten minutes later it was a really nice cross by Jordan Ayo and Kudus heads it in and it's two nil Ghana. Really against the run of play and South Korea had to rattle themselves. However, they come back, they make some changes, and especially um you know, uh, Lee Kang, uh, come, 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 come in, uh, really changed things around, gave, gave a little bit more um, power. And Joe scores two goals uh, in short succession, 58 and 61st, to give Korea a 2-2. And at that moment, as I said, I didn't see the game, but I saw that the score was to there. So, oh, Korea's gone. Now, win, win, win is a pro. It's probably even deserve it so, because Ghana... Um, was tough for them. I mean, uh, they got the two goals, uh, but if you end up conceding such a short time, uh, chances are you're going down. No, nope, you're everything but. Because Inyaki Williams makes a run, he plays it over to Kudus, who puts puts in the net just, just, just a few minutes later, and then Korea made a siege on the Ghanaian goal. But Ghana hang on. Vital three points that give them a huge boost in the arm going forward. And then... What I considered for, for me, this was the most anticipated game. Not that I expect a great game, but I knew this is the imp most important game in, in the group, group stage because both Portugal and Uruguay have the talent to go probably deep in the competition, but only one of them will be able to avoid Brazil. So this was the avoid Brazil game, and I expected more from that than from Spain against Germany. Um, yeah, the first half, Uruguay played really rough and tough. Portugal had a little bit more of the game and you, um, I still think that this Portugal side, if it wouldn't have two key players, namely Fernando Sanch at, at the bench and Cristiano Ronaldo up front, I think this could be a really, really, really good and exciting team. Couldn't show it on the day though. Second half actually made up for a lot that was missing in the first half and um, the lead came through Bruno Fernandes, although Ronaldo was celebrating because he probably got the tip of his hair on the ball. Uh, but if you see it, there is no way that he has touched him because the ball doesn't change direction in any replay. So it should be really the cross that was meant for Ronaldo, should go to, uh, went in, in the net, it was Bruno Fernandes' goal who afterwards even said, you know, it doesn't matter who scored uh, or not, whether it's me or him, most important is we got that win. And then Uruguay. And I was actually a little bit sad, sad to see when Cavani came, came off and Nunez came, came, came off, but actually that change actually really put then, um, Portugal on the, on the back foot. Uh, they hit the, uh, the um, upright, uh, Suarez had two really good chances. There were enough chances in there to make it 1-1 one, one, or even turn the game around. Uh, then with a few more defensive changes, namely taking uh, off Joao Felix and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, the game, uh, Portugal got the game under control again. And I shouldn't have uh, missed that Bentacur actually in the first half had probably the best chance of the entire uh, match so far, uh, at least in the first half. So, you know, there were the chances there for Europe, for Uruguay, despite Portugal being larger, the better team and more cohesive team in Europe, by, uh, just coming with the physicality in there. The decision came through a penal decision that is just ridiculous. I mean, the way that the guy falls down, all he wants to do is, is cushion his fall. And by accident, he hits the ball. This is not a deliberate hand play. And from what I understand in the rules, it is said if it's not deliberate, you cannot, you cannot give a penalty. How this was given penalty was to me an absolute disgrace. Bruno Fernandes puts it home, but for me this was a scandalous decision, an absolutely scandalous decision. Uh, there, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't want to see penalties like this. This was an accidental handball. This was not an intentional handball. The guy is falling over, wants to cushion his fall. He is not even knowing that the ball is there. You can see in the, in, 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 in the reaction. This was an absolute, absolute joke. However, Portugal are now qualified to the next round. So let's look at the standings uh, and focus on Group G and H to the right. On the, on the bottom, we see Brazil, Portugal are already through and very likely in first place. 
It stands between Swiss, Switzerland and Serbia. If Serbia win against Switzerland, uh, they eliminate Switzerland, but Switzerland can live with a draw. Um, and Cameroon has to hope that, you know, um, if Serbia wins, then Cameroon also needs to win by at least the same scoreline against Brazil. Interesting. Definitely in interesting. Brazil have even the first place more or less sewn up. I mean, sweet, uh, sweet, uh, it needs a uh, Brazil loss and then a three goal goal swing for Brazil to not finish in first place. Uh, group H, a uh, very similar scenario. Portugal already through Ghana. Draw is enough. However, they play against Uruguay and South Korea over Portugal can also do something. Uh, again, Portugal having a similar advantage as uh, over Ghana than Brazil has over Switzerland. So, you know, it's very likely Brazil and Portugal finish first. And then it's the, the head to head. In this case, Ghana against Euro Uruguay and Switzerland against Serbia. It's always two again, again, again against four. Who will go on? Uh, and I don't think that the team to place the other, uh, the leader of the, or, or of the group will get much out of these games. But, you know, all has to play. I could see South Korea maybe getting out of there. Uh, as for the projection, uh, Ghana now moving up. The group G still looks as expected with Serbia not enjoying a big chance in uh, moving on. Uh, and in the um, uh, bracket, the only thing that changed is now Brazil would play Ghana a replay of the round of 16 matchup from 2006. But you can already see that Portugal now has a relatively safe spot in the lower half of the bracket and a relatively comfortable bracket, although don't underestimate Switzerland. Switzerland uh, gave them a hard time already in the Nations League. But you know, uh, you would favor Portugal over Morocco, Costa Rica, Switzerland to make two semifinals where they then would meet their arch nemesis in France. As for the overall favorites, Portugal go now in the top five, and just given the talent, I totally can subscribe to that. I think Port uh, Port 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 Portugal is one of the better teams in there. I don't think they will go for a title, but who knows? There's enough talent there, but I think the coaching and uh, having such a superstar does not really help them. But uh, I might be wrong. Still think Brazil, France, uh, Brazil, France, and Spain are more complete teams. Um, tomorrow, or maybe you do it already on the match day, we are back to, uh, we are at first time for a normal schedule. We have a kickoff, uh, Central Europe prime time at four and at eight, meaning in England this is five and seven, and in Qatar this is um, six. Uh, and 10, I think, even in the evening. So, you know, uh, kind of uh, more doable. And we have two games that stick out, Ecuador against Senegal. I think it's a clear head-to-head -head because the Netherlands will get the necessary point against Qatar, although it's not quite certain yet. And then Iran, United States is also head-to-head. -head. Wales have a minuscule chance. And yes, England is theoretically not yet true. But virtually, they have made it to the next round. That was it for me for uh, today. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Let me know who you think will win the World Cup from here on. And what do you think the African teams will do? I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!